Hello everyone, and welcome to your 90-second Cocoa programming tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the addition of SF symbols and some font changes in Big Sur. Now, SF symbols have been around for a little while, and the general idea with them is that they are vector art, so that they can be uh, much larger or smaller than the actual image, they're not bitmaps. Uh, another benefit is that they are sort of a common collection of uh, images that we might use on iOS or macOS. And lastly, they have a sort of uh, correct alignment, sort of so to speak, that uh, if you want to align them with text, uh, you know, before you might just try to align them by center aligning an image. But the nice thing about the SF symbols is that they actually have this baseline alignment that you can do with text so that they look appropriate. And so those are some of the additions. And if you uh, want to learn more, I'll leave a link for the WWC talk so you can learn all about uh, the changes that are coming. But this is a nice little overview, I think, of how you can use SF symbols with the changes in NS font uh, for AppKit. So in front of me, there's just a new Cocoa project, and I've gone ahead and added a button and a label with outlets in the app delegate. And I've gone ahead and added these constraints, but uh, the only constraint I haven't added is between the label and the button so that they can be baseline aligned. So that's what I want to do is I want to baseline align these two items and to do that we can control drag so hold down the control key and drag over from the label to the button or vice versa and there's the option of aligning to the first baseline and that's sort of a measurement in uh, text so that you can align the bottom of the text essentially and that's going to help us align our SF symbols as well. So what we want to do is on this button we want to, uh, I'm going to remove the text on the button here first. And what we can do is we can enter any image that we want. And to look through all the images, there's actually an app called SF Symbols that I'll leave a link for in the description below. I can't remember if it actually comes installed or not, but I'll leave a link just in case it doesn't. And basically, you can see all the different symbols that are representable using SF Symbols. Now, the one I'm going to use is just this first one, which is the square and arrow up. And if I want to copy the name of any of these, we can use this little command shift C shortcut, and that will copy the symbol name for me. So if I want to add this image in on the nib file, I could just paste that in, select whatever image I want, and there we go. Now I have that SF symbol in the button. The last thing I want to do on this button is remove this border just so it really just looks like the symbol. And there we go. We have our SF symbol in uh, our button. Now, uh, the thing that I would like to show you though is how we can do a little bit more customization and the nib doesn't uh, necessarily give us all the customizations we might want. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just delete this image for now and we're gonna go over into code so that I can show you how we can customize this with the label as well. So jumping over to our app delegate here where I've made an outlet for the button and the label what I want to do is configure this button so that it has a simple configuration, which is a new property on NS button, of um, sort of the type that I, I'm just defining. So uh, the symbol configurations are on NS image, and it's NS image dot symbol configuration. And there are sort of two different ways that you can configure the uh, the symbol configuration. So basically, what you're trying to do with a symbol configuration is define how the symbol should appear. And symbols have sort of uh, well, there's different ways they can be configured. The two sort of main um, ways or axes that you can configure them are with weight and scale. So weight is sort of the, the level of uh, matching the text. So if you had like bold font or ultra light font, you could define the weight to be ultra light. And so that's what we can do here, where I'm just going to say that uh, we're going to use the point size configuration, point size meaning the font size. So if you had, say, a size 13 font, your weight and you wanted to have it with bold text for example and then the scale is a measure of sort of how much or how uh, sort of how off the sort of the medium uh, amount that you want it to be so if you define it to be small it will be 20 i think it's 20 percent smaller or 30 percent smaller and then large is 20 or 30 percent larger than medium but medium is kind of the default scale size and again if you want to learn more uh, link in the description for that video um, so here we have the point size being 13, the font would be bold, and then we'd have this uh, medium scale for the image. 
if I wanted now to actually assign, because I haven't actually defined the image that I'm, I'm going to present. So if I wanted to find the image, I can do that in text as well using the new NS image uh, initializer for the system symbol name. And we've already copied that, so I just paste it there. And then there's an accessibility description uh, value as well. This is for obviously accessibility use, but there is a default that comes with SF symbols. So if I don't define it, there will be somewhat of an appropriate uh, value. And I, I believe with this one, that default is share as that would be the text. All right, so here's what my symbol looks like. It's kind of this uh, slightly bold uh, appearance and it's a little bit difficult to see that, but there is a slightly bold appearance to this uh, symbol and it's trying to match whatever the, the font size is that I'm using. So if this is a size 13 font, then at the point size that I'm trying to match is a 13 font. Just to show you some differences, if I use ultra light, and let's just bump my scale up to large, we can kind of see what the symbol would look like in that scenario. So here we have this very thin looking line, right? That's the ultra light style, but you can see that the symbol itself is actually larger uh, than it was in the medium style. So uh, those are some of the differences that you might see when you're doing uh, things like this. So that's the one form of a way that you can configure it is using point size. The other way to configure is using the text style. And this is a new addition to uh, NS font. They have an NS font descriptor now where you can kind of define the types of text that you might have in your app. So this is things like title text or body text uh, or different things like that. And so you can define a text style. And so text style, we're going to do title one. So there's a whole different variety of uh, text styles, but if you want to look at them all, you can see NS font dot text style. Anyway, we're going to use title one as the text style here and it still gives me the option of configuring scale so if I did want to do a large scale for example uh, we could do that but if you don't want to define it I'm just going to leave it alone and we'll just use the default. Now to go with this uh, text style configuration the idea here is that you can also configure your label to have a matching uh, text style as well. So to do this I can use the font uh, property on NS text field and what we're going to do is NS font preferred font for this particular text style and the text style I just want to match that to whatever I defined here and then I don't have any options so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, delete that but let's go ahead and run and see that we get a nice large label so this is using the text style of title one and then we have label here which is also defining this font uh, using this new method in Big Sur called preferred font where you can pass in the different styles for the font text. All right, um, that pretty much covers everything that you'd want to know about you know, how to configure these values in code. Uh, if you want to learn more though about SF symbols and sort of the details around them, there's tons more in the WWDC talk which I'll leave linked in the description and I'll see you guys in another video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.